I'm really sorry, son, but I'm afraid we'll have to amputate. That's a weird opening. It's a good intro. That's a yeah, weird. Z-Axis kind of does that, but... <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX Maxim Remix. Now, That's while the geez. game very slowly loads in, uh, <laughs> I just, I need to show this once. I need to show this once. Uh, <laughs> so you may, oh, I'm Insetic, with me is Matt Rocks 101 Hey, what's up? And Blank Tester. Good God, that loading. Yeah, so, I, sorry. You may be asking, hey, what is Dave Mira Maximum Remix? Well, if you played the original Dave Mira Freestyle BMX, Maximum Remix is basically an expansion, a re-release of the game that came out a year later, adding more levels, uh, changing up the goals on the old levels, adding more multiplayer modes, adding wall rides, and basically, yeah, expanding the game, putting more in, except I think it had to lose some music tracks, though. Weird. And lose some of the more iconic ones, a.k.a. the ones by bands that probably cost the most money to license. Wait, so a, a game with the word remix in the title has less music? Remix! Yeah, but that's, that's, that's the one thing it kind of loses. So, I've played all the way through, uh, this is on an emulated PS1, by the way. I've played all the way through ProQuest, and we're going to do another ProQuest, Pro but for this, I think we have to pick the man, the myth, the miracle boy himself. Rest in peace, Dave Mira. Yeah. yeah Rest in peace. Four stats, you see air, speed, spins, balance. <laughs> oh, that's a I'd good see... model! <laughs> oh. Yeah. Original Dave Mira was, I think, 2000 on the PlayStation, so competing quite well along the original Tony Hawk's. And then, like I said, this came out a year later. 2001. Um, and actually did add quite a bit of stuff. If you, It's probably the same price as the original game if you see it in game stores. So huh. I'd say pick it up. And Wait. So we're starting in some new levels. We're starting in the hometown levels. The original Dave Mira will start in Greenville, but here we go through some of the new levels first. So this is the carnival now, oh, and no. uh, so we're going to start with the amateur challenges. I hate you, carnival levels. <laughs> if you haven't played Dave Mira, it's kind of structured different than like the Tony Hawk games and other games like that. In those games, you get all the goals at once, and you can do whichever ones, but here you need to pass all of the first set of goals to get to a second set. And then you'd need to pass all of the second set to get to the third set if you wanted to do those. Um, <laughs> if you, you wanted have to, to do them? <laughs> well, because, because you have to pass amateur and pro goals to move on with the game, but the third set hardcore is kind of bonus goals. Ooh. It'll get you extra things, like extra... Um, shit, I'm sorry. But it, it'll basically get you extra stuff, and it'll get you closer to unlocking the secret final level, but it's not required to, like, move on to the next set of regular levels. This already looks like it has more to do in it than that. Uh, Can I just say, I... I I hate what they did inside that tent. Um, for the floor. Because <laughs> yeah. they did the dark... They were part of the Dark Summit school of lighting and design. Where instead of doing lighting, they just colored the floor. Yeah, dude, that's what uh, you yeah. do. They just sprayed red on the ground and said, Oh, there's a red light above you. Don't look. Don't look. There's <laughs> just red light. And yeah. you go, oh, okay. I love I love these trees. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you, you guys are, yeah, you guys are looking at the, you know, PlayStation 1 parts of the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, the, the, the short sides. But I guess that is more of a stab at Dark Summit than it is a stab at this game. At, because that, yeah. this game is in PS1, so. But... If you haven't played Dave Mira, so not only are the goal setups different than like the Tony Hawk games, but really the whole feel of the game is different. In the Tony Hawk games, it's really about combos. It's about doing an air trick into a grind, manually into the next jump, getting a gap, doing your special trick. But here, it's more focused around getting points off a single trick. Hmm. And so like, you can do a normal trick and add a modifier, or do a backflip version of that trick. and add a modifier and a spin, because really the best you're going to do is air trick into a grind. Is there no manual? It. Uh, there are manuals, but they're kind of a novelty. Um, yes. As you see in this game, grinding is kind of hard to keep going. Manually, unless you're going straight on flat ground, 
you're not going to really do it. Like, you can't land an air trick into a manual. Or you can, but it'll go for about a tenth of a second and then just stop. Interesting. Uh, so, Dave Mirror 1, you can't really chain a bunch of tricks together, but the game knows that. So, it gives you a ton of options to do single tricks, because here's what it does. I'm running this game alongside a Matt Hoffman 1 Let's yeah. Play, <laughs> which is literally the biking equivalent of Tony Hawk, and it uses the same engine and all that. Yeah. But Matt Hoffman 1 has kind of a tricking problem, because the game doesn't really stick as well to a one trick button does a certain thing, the other trick button does its own thing. Yeah, there's no Kind of like, like how Tony trick, Hawk has trick. flip tricks and grabs. Yeah. But here in Dave Mira, one button does all your tricks, and the other button does modifiers. So, like one hand, or one foot, or seat grab, and you can basically put any modifier on any trick. So what I was showing at the end of my first run was like that turn down. I was doing a I could do a turn down or a turn down one hander or a turn down no footer or a backflip turn down. Like, there are so many options to get, you know, use the same trick a lot but do different modifiers and get a lot of points. Interesting. You know? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, would you say that that system works a lot better than it does in uh, Matt Hoffman? Because Matt Hoffman came out the same year as this game. It's worth noting. Yeah. Matt Hoffman. Matt Hoffman came out the same year as the yeah, remix as the remix of this edition. Game. Yeah, yeah. So Dave Mira was out a year earlier, and yeah, I mean, it works well within the limitations. Because what can you do on a bike? Like you can't really do flip tricks versus grab tricks. Uh. Um. So here's what I'm gonna do in the LP. I'm gonna do all of the amateur and pro goals as we get to the levels, and I'm gonna group the levels together into kind of their sets. But on the hardcore goals, I'm going to save all of those until the end of the game. Because amateur and pro, you're expected to be able to do them when you get there. Oh but the hardcore God. goals, especially at the very beginning, you are definitely not expected to do those with your starting gear. Mm, and I'd say actually the sequel kind of muddied that up. Because like in Dave Mirror 2, yeah, the first few levels had some really hard hardcore goals but they were just possible enough that you'd try them. <laughs> like, yeah. that 525-foot grind on the first level, which, if anyone's played Dave Mirror 2, that, that challenge haunts their nightmares. <laughs> you could do that with your starting bike, and I did that with my starting bike, but it was really hard. I'm sure if I came back later with better gear, it would have been a lot easier. Mm. So, here in Dave Mirror 1, even in the original... The first level of the original Dave Mirror 1 had the hardest hardcore challenge. A challenge you just couldn't do with your starting gear. Interesting. And they rolled that into Maximum Remix here, so that you go for those and hopefully you think, Okay, I can't do this, let me move on. Wow, this yeah. had physics. That's something interesting yeah. I noticed. It looks like it has almost ragdoll physics whenever you bail. Yeah, let's... Yeah, actually, I think it does have ragdoll yeah, which I thought which was is, incredible. Which is neat. Actually, you were streaming this game uh, a few days ago at yeah. the time of recording, and I uh, I remember somebody mentioned they they love ragdoll physics, and I'm like, who doesn't? You know, <laughs> somebody else said yeah. who doesn't. But like, like, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of technically impressive. It has. It that. is pretty technically impressive for yeah, yeah for the PS1. It that's... definitely looks like ragdoll physics. Yeah, at least some sort of imitation of them. Yeah, it's got a lot go. of impressive stuff. The thing it comes with, though, is a bunch of lag. Mm. Yeah. Almost every level lags. And, uh, there was a shitload of uh, loading. loading at the very beginning. I, I don't think that's just an emulator thing, because in my stream, people were talking about, like, oh, I remember this game on console. Yeah, it lagged this bad. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the trade-off you get. With some of the later levels, it gets a lot worse. But, uh, yeah, it's really got a bunch of in impressive parts to it. Again... As you can see, core gameplay is fairly clunky, mm -hmm. but the game knows that it is, and mostly... Tries to play to its advantage. Yeah, mostly tries to play to its advantage. Now, well, that was there were cool. a few um, challenges across the game that are too hard because it doesn't really recognize that. Hmm. Like, we're about to get to... Uh, oh, and I should say, yeah, I streamed this full game, so if you want to, you can just watch... I mean, it's six and a half hours long, but you can watch me just stream through the whole game. Uh, 
And just I jumped me. in at well, the very end. Yeah, Blank Tester jumped at the end. Or you can watch, you know, these post-commentary videos, you know, being pretty informative at the start, but hopefully we'll get more funny and hilarious as it goes along. <laughs> Wacky and, and antic-filled and... But yeah, some challenges, like grinding a certain distance, I don't know how characters with low grinding would do mm. on can this challenge. Can you increase stats for like, your character, uh, right? You get more bikes as you go so along. So you unlock but... bikes instead of increasing like character yeah. stats. But you wouldn't have been able to Ooh. at this point, and this right. is a pro goal, so you need to do this to move on. Oh. Um, so yeah, this is the first challenge that I think is bad, because grinding isn't, you know, the best in this game, and 60 feet is kind of long. Yeah, 60 and, feet's just the beginning of, like, oh my god, that's, that's too and, long. And, and this level doesn't really have a lot of good areas to do so, because, like, grinding all those quarter pipes that are on the corners or whatever is kind of, eh. Yeah. Luckily, luckily, because of the game's physics, you can, like, fall out of a grind and land in another grind kind of accidentally. And it'll will so it still count? Down. Yeah, it looks like it. Again, an another thing of the game working to its advantages is, like, in the Tony Hawk games, if you're grinding, you have that balance bar. And if the balance bar goes too far over, you just crash. Yeah. Because you're expected yeah. to hold your balance. But here, if you are if you fall too much to one side and you fall off the rail, you don't crash, you know? Most of the time. You just land. You land your trip. And that, honestly, that makes a lot of sense because, I mean, with the skateboard, if you fall over to one side, you're not going to, like, be able to recover from that. Right. Usually. But, but with a bike, bike, you've yeah. got a leg on either side yeah. of the bike. So. Yeah. You can totally just, like, you're not, it's not like you're hard pressed to stay balanced on it anyway. Yeah. You know, you can just yeah. pop off to the side, like what he does, like what you see him do. Like, whenever they do, like, a nose pick, you know. Uh, yeah, they do whatever they want. It. Ice pick. Yeah. No, it's called an ice pick, yeah. Not a nose pick. Not a nose pick. No, I feel like <laughs> no. I think that is a trick. It's when you is do it on the trick. It wouldn't surprise both. me if that was a trick. I think they're both. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just you can go for manuals, and like I said, most of the time they won't really do much, but they won't hurt you. Uh, grinding usually doesn't hurt you. Lip yeah. tricks, you can fall out of those and mostly be good. Now sometimes you can get like so horizontal that you will crash, but that's because you land on your body. And yeah. is that an Duh. instant replay I'm seeing back there? Yeah, yeah. That's instant an interesting replays. feature. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Matt Hoffman has that too, but you have to watch it manually. You have to select to watch it. It's weird. Yeah. Alright, so we saw the uh, carnival, and then we saw the market. I point this out. I point this out in my streams, but I love how the market level, instead of being a nice outdoor market, is literally like a Walmart and a strip mall chain with a big parking lot. Yeah, I was gonna That's, say like, I love how the parking so, lot is. What you it's so Americana. Yeah, like. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go to the market. Oh, what are you gonna get? Some fresh produce? No, I'm gonna get beef jerky. <laughs> I'm gonna get whatever my local Target has on sale. Yeah. I do want to say, I honestly like looks at these levels a lot better than uh, Matt Hoffman, because Matt Hoffman had a, like not a lot of stuff, just a lot of space, and these look like they're very dense. I wanted to say, like, Matt, you and Whoa. I... Yeah. That's an incredible uh, glitch. You and I were talking, and you were talking about how to, you don't really like Tony Hawk 3, because the levels start to get a little too unrealistic. Yeah. Like... Who would go skate in a foundry? Who would skate in an airport? Yeah. Whereas in Dave Mira, the levels are almost strikingly basic, like yeah. real to life. Like, you are always riding around either levels that are built for like a competition or levels you could see people riding in. No, yeah. here's, can I say, counterpoint to Matt's complaint about Tony Hawk 3 where who would ride in a foundry? Uh, skaters would ride in a foundry, dude. They're, uh, the rebels. You know? <laughs> they would skateboard in an airport. Yeah, I would skateboard in an airport if I could skateboard. Uh, <laughs> but what I can't. What the hell was that? That was beautiful. That's what uh, it was. I think in some of the like fast plant challenges or whatever, the game magnetizes you to it. Because uh -oh. I was like, shit, that's too easy. Let me try and show off how to get that. And now I can't. Because like... Kind of like, your, your character is maybe a little too slow, even if they have high speed. Mm. Um, sometimes you need to manipulate things like riding up and down half pipes really quick to get a burst of speed. 
Mm. But as you see, even with that, I can't get nearly close enough to fast plant as I could, well, when the challenge was up. So yeah. I think there's some magnetism there. It seems like they're trying to make up for their own their own jankiness by yeah. helping yeah. you out with some of the some of the things. Yeah. But I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, saying yeah. That it seems like that's what they're like trying to, like with the fact that you know grinding doesn't instantly knock you, you know, make you bail if you fall off the grind, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like you now, bail. That's definitely physics. <laughs> I, yeah. I'd say that shouldn't have been a crash, but that's maybe the first time. Yeah. yeah. Like otherwise, I mean, you can like land sideways off of jumps, and as long as you're not currently tricking. You're pretty much fine. Like, yeah. I honestly, I kind of that seems like a kind of a nice feature to help, you know, the game Ooh. with its own jankiness. If that makes sense. Yeah. To and I mean, it's also rewarding bit. because like you don't have a balance meter on screen, um, yeah. and so like if if they had a balance meter on screen, then it's like okay, well I understand. I need to maintain this thing. But like if there's no balance meter on screen, I'm just supposed to eyeball it. You know, and then they still punished you for falling off your, you know, for falling out of the grind. Yeah. That would be really annoying. Yeah. That would be yeah. really and shitty. Matt Hoffman was really I mean, shitty that's with like, that balance beater. Yeah, that's like kind of an extreme sports oh training wheels kind of thing. The first couple Tony Hawks didn't have balance bar. But they also didn't really have a long enough grind for you to need one. Yeah. I mean, especially yeah. Tony Hawk 1. Tony Hawk 2 probably should have had a balance meter for grinding. But Tony Hawk 1, I don't think there's a single rail in there long enough for you to need a balance rail. Hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think of one. Uh, didn't the first level have, like, a gap where you grinded the entire back quarter pipe? Something? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't remember that. Uh, I'd say one thing that maybe you can't hear with the lower music is that because the game lags so much, the audio doesn't lag as well. And oh. since they've since they've set up all of these music tracks to be two minutes long, mm -hmm. and then fade out, sometimes if you experience some real lag, which will lag the timer as well, uh, you'll get multiple music tracks in a level, because like, one will play, fade out, and you'll still have like 20 seconds left. And honestly, that kind of really starts leading the soundtrack to feel smaller than it is. Because yeah. uh, you're going to almost always hear two songs. Oh. Uh, at least one full song and then some of the other. Like, you know, in like Tony Hawk, it never lagged bad enough for that to happen. Yeah. But since it'd always be one run, per, one song per run, the soundtrack would seem to last a lot longer. Yeah. Especially because they had to strip some songs out of the original soundtrack. I was getting some complaints in my stream around the two hour point of like, this music is so repetitive. Can you please swap it out for something else? Yeah. <laughs> um. But I mean, there's still some decent names in the soundtrack, like Cypress Hill and Social Distortion. That's hmm. pretty good. But yeah, now it's mostly kind of like upbeat pop punk instead of like previously you had some Sublime and some Deftones as well. Wait, so do we not get the... Oh, so the fourth level... Yeah, the fourth level, even after you beat Amateur and Pro, is just locked. And so you could, I could see someone getting there and going, what, have I not played enough? And then going back and beating their head against the hardcore challenges when, turns out, the fifth level's been unlocked. You, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's level three weird. unlocks level five. Yeah, the fourth level is actually the super secret final level. What? Yeah. That's not smart. Yeah, I'm, so. Why? <laughs> I don't know, that's weird. Um... So yeah, we saw the hometown amateur pro goals again. I'm skipping all the hardcore challenges until the end when I'll go back and do them all kind of in one, you know, go through. Um, so then now we're moving on to Greenville and we're moving on to the levels that are in the original Dave Mira. So now we're heading to the original level one and we'll see what they do there in the remixed version of the game. Oh, damn. So thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.